So this is a dual stage relay driver circuit, which has several advantages, one of them being that it more well protects the microcontroller from the higher current relay circuit and also that you have a common ground of the relay. The relay shares a common ground. As far as the design of the circuit, uh, and also the, this has a lot of gain, so it requires very little current from the microcontroller to turn this relay on. By the way, if you'd like to build this circuit, here is the schematic. Here's a picture of the breadboard with the schematic references. And here's the parts list. So the calculations for this would be the same for the this final stage right here for the multiple stage uh, relay driver circuit. The current going through the relay is going to be the 12 volts divided by the 365 ohms, which gives you 33 milliamps. That's going to be used as a basis to calculate your base resistor. Your base resistor is 15K. So essentially what happens is on this circuit, when this goes high, the microcontroller this turns this transistor on, pulls this low, and allows current to flow through here and turns this transistor. So both these transistors are used in their saturation mode, which they should be for a transistor switch. Just like the previous circuit, we have 33 milliamps passing through here. And uh, we have calculated that 825 microamps, or 0.825, milliamps is needed to turn this transistor on. And that again is your IC divided by the beta, which is 200 typically for, and this is a 2N3906, which is the, the counter, the PNP counterpart to the 2N3904. About the current, uh, uh, a current amplification beta of around 200 is fairly typical. So you got your current divided by that. Multiply that times 5. Again, that's the rule I use. That gives you 825 milliamps in order to turn this transistor on. How do you get 825 milliamps going through here? Well, you have, when this transistor is on, it's going to be approximately 0 volts across here. You're going to have approximately, now you got that PN junction right there, so you got to subtract 0.7. So that gives you 11.3 volts across this resistor. 11.3 volts, you divide that by the current. And that gives you an approximate a resistor value that is needed to drive this into saturation. That resistor value comes out to 13,697 ohms. A fairly close standard value is going to be 15K. So we use 15K right there. It's not critical because we're already pushing this hard into saturation. We have 15K, and so now we can calculate our resistor value needed to put this one into saturation. Well, we already know that we got... 825 microamps, so it's 0.825 milliamps through here. And we take that, and uh, we're back down here. We would be back to our formula to push this into saturation of collector current, 825, divided by beta of 200, typical for this transistor, times 5 for an overdrive. You got 0.0, so you got 0.000825 amps, 5 by 200 times 5, that gives you 21 microamps. So you take that 21 microamps, um, that's going to give you 4.3 divided by 21 microamps, they're going to give you uh, pretty close to 220K, 220K resistor. So that's a standard value, 220K, we use that right there. So that is the uh, calculations for this particular circuit, and we'll go ahead and demonstrate that and measure these voltages here and these currents. So this is the dual stage relay circuit in action here. This is a schematic of it. Here is your five volts input coming from the microcontroller. This, just using this switch right here, this is five volts from another power supply. Uh, this left side of this resistor here goes high to five volts. This is your Q1, which is an NPN transistor. And this resistor here passes the current in through the base of this transistor, brings the base high, turns this transistor on, and brings this resistor low, this side of this resistor low, pulling the base of this transistor down. Normally going to be high because of this resistor here. Uh, the reason we have that resistor there is to keep it, keep it high into a defined state until we're ready to pull it down. So when, when this transistor pulls 
the base of this transistor down, it puts this transistor into saturation, and in doing that, turns this transistor on and uh, energizes this relay uh, by the current going through the collector of this transistor. So this has 12 volts across it, and this has just about zero volts. So if we press this button here, we're going to be bringing this left side of this resistor high, and we get our relay coming on. This LED here is just connected to the contacts over here, side of the relay, through a current limiting resistor just to show that the relay is coming on. So this is the current right here. I'm going to set this schematic over here. This is the current reading we have. So we only have 19.9 or microamps needed to turn this transistor on right here. And you can see that we have 33 micro milliamps going through the coil of this relay here, uh, which is what this is basically specified for. You've got a 12 volt, 365 ohm coil should be around, you know, around 30 something milliamps. All right, so that energizes that. So now the voltage across this driver transistor right here should be pretty close to zero volts because it's a saturation. So I'm just going to go ahead and bypass this switch. So we can leave it on. I'm going to go ahead and check the voltage across this. You can see this is well into saturation because this transistor only has 0.2 volts across it, which is what we want. That leaves uh, the rest of the mostly 12 volts across that relay there. Now about the gain of this circuit, so only 19.9 microamps needed to control 33 milliamps. That's a gain of 1623, which is a very high, high gain uh, as opposed to the single stage circuit. And that's one of the advantages. And actually you have, because this relay can pass 30 amps through its contacts, effectively you got a 1.5 million gain uh, in, this, in this circuit, total gain. One of the advantages of this circuit is that you have this relay over here and you've got this transistor here, which uh, most of the current goes through. And if you want to, this microcontroller, suppose this flyback diode right here, which I didn't actually mention, but the flyback diode here is to capture and dampen the negative voltage spike that is caused by the collapsing of this coil, the magnetic field collapsing of this coil. A negative voltage spike um, of significant amount of voltage can appear across this. So this diode here will dampen that and protect designed to protect this transistor and the, the circuitry around it. So what if this does short out? I have seen these short out before. What will happen is you'll get 12 volts and just about zero ohms right here. And, the way, and these diodes go bad. Oftentimes they do short out. So you'll get uh, a lot of current going through here. And when these transistors are subject to a large amount of current, they often do short out. So what you can get is you can have a short between the emitter and the base and get 12 volts right here. But that's not gonna be much of a problem because this transistor right here is another buffer and this high value resistor helps protect the microcontroller. On the single stage version, you have the microcontroller connected only through a resistor to the base of this transistor. If you got 12, 12 volts right there, then that could, um, could easily damage the microcontroller because they're very intolerant of voltages like that. So that's one of the advantages. Another advantage of this type of a circuit right here. So that's some fairly detailed information on the functionality and design of fairly commonly used bipolar junction, transistor, single stage and dual stage relay driver circuits. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. For more information about this project, as well as recommended breadboarding equipment, best practices, and safety tips, 
please go to breadboardcircuits.com.